workshop. And uh, uh, the topic is the passive scalar spectrum at very high Schmidt number, especially the spectral form of at the, uh, in the uh, very far uh, diffusive range. Uh, this is a joint work with my colleague, uh, the Saito. So the, uh, let's begin with the uh, two non-dimensional parameters. As we know, in this program, uh, the one important uh, non-dimensional parameter is the Reynolds number. And in addition to it, uh, that, uh, there is a one important parameter for passive scalar, the Schmidt number or Prandtl number. The physically meaning that this is a ratio of uh, the molecular uh, viscosity to uh, molecular diffusivity. Uh, this Schmidt number, in my talk, I mostly uh, refer the Schmidt number. The Schmidt number can vary quite a uh, wide range. For the uh, mercury, it's about 0.01. And the for salinity, it's about 700. Or for the engine oil, it's quite large. And this is the example of uh, the salinity distribution in the ocean. So you can see that the, the salinity in the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean is quite high when compared to the Pacific. And the, another example of uh, the Harshmit uh, scale is the aerosols. In the last uh, the five years, I have been involved in a, a study of droplets, or the growth of droplets, which are convected by turbines. So the, in the case of a cumulus crowd in the, in the maritime, uh, in the tropical area, so the uh, aerosol is a kind of very tiny uh, salt uh, blown up from the sea surface. And the, this uh, aerosol will uh, come to the, uh, some uh, uh, a high altitude, about 500 meters. And this uh, aerosol can be a condensation nuclei for the uh, water vapor to condensate on it. Without this uh, aerosol, so the uh, nucleation of very tiny cloud droplets is very, almost very difficult. So with the uh, existence of aerosol, the, we can get uh, uh, tiny cloud droplet. After that, uh, the, by condensation process, they are, these tiny cloud droplets evolve into the size of uh, about 30 micrometers. During this process, so the heat is released, then the upward draft is generated, and then the, uh, up beyond the 30 microns in the uh, radius, so the droplets begin to collide to form the raindrops. So anyhow, the, uh, if we uh, regard, uh, treat the uh, distribution of aerosol as a continuum, <laughs> we may est estimate the diffusivity of these aerosols. The typical size of uh, the uh, aerosol is less than about 0.01 micrometers. So by using the Einstein's formula, we have this estimate for the Schmidt number, about 10,000. It's quite large. So this is the example of snapshot of, of the, uh, the smoke aerosol from mountain fire in the far east. So this uh, the fire, uh, uh, the uh, smoke aerosol can be uh, the nuclei of crowd condensation. Now we consider the spectra of the scalar or aerosols at high Schmidt number. In this program, as we know, depending on the Schmidt number, there are a few uh, scaling range for passive scalar spectrum. In the, for the uh, inertial convective range, so we know, the uh, both the kinetic energy and the scalar spectra over SK to the minus 5 thirds. And the Schmidt number is higher than, much higher than one, then one inertial, uh, inertial uh, scaling range exists called uh, viscous convective range. In this range, the uh, velocity field is already died out, very smooth everywhere. However, the uh, scalar field can be uh, rough because molecular diffusivity doesn't work at these scales. But 
Uh, after some successive uh, the squeezing or stretching, the scalar field can be uh, confined in a very thin layer about some wave number, KB, which is determined by uh, the later. Anyhow, the one important thing about uh, the uh, viscous convective layer, uh, uh, convective range, is that time scale of velocity field is independent of wave number, which is given by just a column of time scale. Therefore, the uh, bachelor wave number is determined by balancing the uh, viscous uh, diffusive time scale to the, the uh, column of time scale. So we have this estimate. That means bachelor wave number at which the molecular diffusivity works is proportional to the square root of Schmidt number. Okay. Now, let's consider the situation of the aerosol scalar in the context of high number. So at large scales, we have large turbulent eddies. After succession of a cascade, we, they are, uh, the fluids are in, uh, described in, uh, become small uh, blobs. The Kormon, typical Kormon scale in the context of the cloud is about uh, uh, 500 micrometers, uh, 0.5 millimeters. Uh, this is a Kormor scale. And the, uh, since the Schmidt number is, we estimated 10 to the fourth, therefore the uh, bachelor uh, the length scale is about five, five micrometers. In between them, the uh, raindrops plays a game. The typical size of raindrop is about 20 micrometers to 30 micrometers. For drizzle, for the raindrops, it's about 100 or 500 micrometers, something like that. And being, uh, smaller than the, uh, the bachelor scale, there is a, some region, uh, scale region, in fact that the cloud condensation nuclei plays a game. The typical size of aerosol is about 0.1 or 1 micrometers. So there's a scale separation from here to here and here to here. So uh, this is uh, uh, the scale range I'm talking about. Among them, uh, this is uh, uh, the inertial convective range, but mostly I'm talking about the, this range, the diffusive range. when the viscous convective range exists for when the Schmidt number is very high. So now I explain the some uh, representative statistical theory for passive scalar in this range. The key player is that rate of strain tensor. So as I told you that we are talking about a scale much smaller than Kolmono scale, therefore velocity field so smooth Therefore, we may assume that velocity gradient almost uniform over some range of scale. And then uh, we consider the uh, rate of strain tensor in this, and the, uh, we take uh, some local coordinate in which that eigenvector is parallel to the local coordinates. The eigenvector is uh, the ordered in this way. The gamma is most negative. The alpha is most positive, the largest one. I say. I talked the three theories. One is bachelor theory. In his theory, the gamma is the most negative eigenvalue of rate of tensor. The gamma is assumed to be constant or no fluctuation, but it has infinite time correlation. Okay? In the opposite case is that gradient theory. It's a famous theory for passive scalar. He assumed that the uh, rate of strain tensor is uh, obeys Gaussian statistics and zero time correlation. In between them, there are Lagrangian spectral theory. This is a spectral theory based on uh, some uh, mathematical procedure. So it assumes that the new make uh, nearly Gaussian statistics for rate of strain tensor, and it has finite correlation time. Now, I explain a little bit uh, in, the, more, in more detail. And the bachelor theory. So in his theory, uh, in a local coordinate, uh, in the, the, uh, each axis is uh, the parallel to the eigenvector. 
So we suppose that the velocity field squeezing. So the, there is no pressure term of scalar. Therefore, scalar is easily squeezed into the small size. But at some scales, diffusivity becomes work. Therefore, the bachelor assumed that they are the balance between a squeezing term and diffusive term. So he obtained this uh, equation for the scalar spectra. This equation is easily integrated to half this one. The point is that k to the minus one and the scalar uh, Gaussian decay in far diffusive range. Then Bachelor thought that the okay, gamma fluctuates, therefore this gamma is replaced by some effective rate, uh, strain rate, which is given by this one. The result is that there are some uh, non-dimensional constant, Cb, the k to the minus one, followed by Gaussian decay in the far range. Now, Krachner model. He assumed that S is uh, delta correlated in time. So he obtained the equation for E theta as this. The point is that this term, second order derivatives with respect to wave number, this is, if, uh, this is a, a expression, or this explains the fluctuation effect of straight, straining field. And one important thing is that lambda. Lambda is a triple relaxation time which uh, describes the rate of transfer of scalar from through the uh, inertial a viscous convective range. Anyhow, the lambda in theory, lambda is constant. Outcome is Cb, k to the minus one, and exponential decay. Now, third, spectral theory of, of scalar. The Lagrangian theory, like the LGDIA by Krachnan or Lagrangian normal approximation by Canada, uh, this uh, uh, Lagrangian spectral theory uh, contains no ad, hoc, no ad hoc parameters, and the set of equations is free, uh, uh, obtained by free systematic uh, way. And the equation is closed by using the Lagrangian representatives, but let's skip the detail. The result is Result, it, equation for scalar is very much similar to that of Krachner. The difference is here. The lambda is now in de, uh, depend, uh, the, web, uh, the function of wave number. Okay? The result is Cb and k to the minus one. These are the same. But the, uh, in the far diffusive range, spectral decays uh, Gaussian way, quite rapid. This is a summary. The uh, bachelor theory, it decays Gaussian way. Lagrangian theory predicts Gaussian decay. On the other hand, Krachner theory predicts exponential decay. There is some difference in far diffusive range. Now, let's look at the DNS data. This is the data by the PK's group, uh, Diego, Sujini, and Yang. So the, for the case of Schmidt number 10, the tail is not uh, long enough, but it is apparent that DNS curve decays quite uh, slowly than the bachelor, or bachelor decays, bachelor spectrum decays quite fast. And Krachner spectra is not the same, but close to the DNS. Now, this is a measurement date. So Planton number is seven. The, uh, this is the data, and this is the bachelor uh, spectra, and the uh, creatinine spectra, the curve is like this one, very close to each other. So now I come to the point to explain my motivation <laughs> problem. Why is the creatinine model so good? In respect of apparent this big difference in velocity field. As I told you, the velocity field in the Krachner model assumed Gaussian delta correlate in time, which is totally different to the case of actual Navier-Stokes turbulence. It's a big difference. Apparent, this apparent uh, discrepancy needs to be explained. And our current status tells is that we lack some physics 
to understand, explain the scalar spectra in far diffusive range. So my position is that maybe the scalar spectra in far diffusive range is not so important, except very peculiar cases. You know. However, this apparent discrepancy between observation and the theory is suggest we do not know something important for the scalar spe uh, dynamics of scalar spectrum. So then what uh, functional form is the far, uh, scalar spectrum in the far diffusive range at high Schmidt number and Lenz number? It's a, my question. This is the, the different uh, statement about the three theories. Uh, for the time scale and uh, statistics of straining feed. So the bachelor theory sits here for the infinite time scale. The Kleitner model sits here, the zero time correlation, but nearly hot Gaussian. And the Lagrangian spectral closure tells uh, is sitting around here. But our target is here because we are considering actual turbulence effect. Okay, to approach this problem, we did some uh, faster step. We did some computation, DNS. Uh, we integrated Navier-Stokes, the scalar equation, both are excited by random force or random injection, which has uh, uh, delta correlated in time and applied only low wave number range. So the uh, range of the parameter of the Schmidt number is 200 to 1,000. And the uh, resolution is around here. And, however, because we consider the high Schmidt number, so we needed to keep the Reynolds number quite small or moderate, like the 42. And this is an example of snapshot ice contour of the scala. So you can see that the scala field highly, how do you say, uh, squeezed in small scales. However, this is a vorticity field, instead of field. You can see very smooth, a thick, okay? So you can see that there is clear se scale separation in this problem. And the, the scalar spectra, uh, this is instrument instrument spectra and the scalar spectra. And uh, uh, this is a no, uh, normalized uh, the uh, scalar transfer flux, as you can see. Over the way, uh, one decade of wave, wave number, the curve stays almost one. Now, this is a, a compensated 3D scalar spectrum by multiplying K1. So the curve stays almost horizontal line. The uh, value is about 0.57. Now, we put the Kretchner spectra on this curves, like this one. nicely collapse. Why? This is a, a, the a same uh, plot, but in the uh, semi-logarithmic way, the 3D scalar spectrum. So the collagenous spectra are slightly uh, decays faster than the DNS, but the, the, uh, this is a three-dimensional uh, plot, but if we uh, compute the one-dimensional scalar spectrum, uh, the three curves nicely follow the straight line, and similarly to this, gradient and curve like this one, the slightly decays faster than DNS, but close to each other. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, now, the problem is that a spectral theory contains, uh, consider the, uh, the finiteness of correlation of strain field like this one, by introducing a uh, divisive time scale. The only remaining factor which is not considered is a non-Gaussianity of the strain field. So we consider. So remember, the, the bachelor theory uh, introduced the, uh, the inter uh, spectrum is expressed in terms of gamma. It's the most negative eigenvalue of rate of strain tensor. It is quite natural to compute the distribution of gamma, like this one, okay? R lambda is 42. You can see left tail, left tail is quite long. 
Now, let's take an average of bachelor spectra over the distribution of DNS obtained gamma. Okay? The red curve is the uh, DNS for the passive scalar in, diff in the far diffusive range. And the blue curve is computed by this spectra, this formula. So two curves are close to each other. And we put the further the largest computation to the graphs. Again, we can see that uh, green curves close to the blue one. So this uh, correspond a uh, collapse of the two curves suggests that import, uh, intermittence of straining motion of the, is very important to have the uh, non Gaussian uh, non uh, the exponential decay or at least slow decay in of scalar spectrum in far diffusive range. So far, the story is about the result for moderate Reynolds number. Now we we'd like to explore. What is the asymptotic spectrum, scalar spectrum, a high Schmidt number and high Reynolds number? We cannot do the DNS for this case because Schmidt number is quite high. Okay, so to proceed further, we uh, do the ana uh, theoretical analysis with help of DNS data for uh, rate of strain tensor. For this purpose, we use uh, uh, DNS data, uh, about around 835. The, our uh, spec, uh, the, uh, turbulence has a spectra, is like this one. So there exists some inertial range. Then uh, these blue and green curves are passive scale spectra, but the Schmidt number is 0.72. But we do not use this data. We just use the data of uh, velocity field. Now, we computed the uh, PDF of three eigenvalues and PDF epsilon. So you can see the left tail of gamma is quite long, and the tail of PDF, uh, PDF tail of epsilon is quite long. Now, for the theoretical analysis, we need the functional form asymptotic tail of these PDFs. Now, uh, this is a one example. Uh, this is a long both logarithmic plot for the PDF of gamma or alpha. So you can see that for small eigenvalues, the PDF obeys power law with exponent four. It's very clear number. And for the tail, the beta, beta is uh, obtained by the, uh, the fitting the straight line in this uh, little bit long of low PDF. The uh, beta is about 0.6. Okay. Now, uh, this is a similar plot, but for epsilon. For low epsilon, PDF obeys power law with exponent 1.50. The tail is 0.278, uh, uh, whatever. The point is that. Now, with the help of this DS data, we assume that asymptotic PDF of gamma, like this one, uh, prefactor with exponent alpha and stretched exponential. Now, uh, this uh, functional form of PDF of gamma is the plumbed in this one. Now, we compute this integral by using steep descent. The result is k to the minus 1 and some exponential decay with this factor. By using the value of the beta 0.6, now this exponent is smaller than one, meaning that scalar spectra in the far diffusive range decays stretch exponential way, slower than the exponential. But this is a result by doing the uh, actual numerical computation on this one. The red is the, uh, by using the, uh, the PDF obtained by DNS. So the, please note that the abscissa is the, with the power of 0.75. So the straight line of the red curve shows that it, indeed there are a scalar spectral decays in the straight exponential. I skip the detail. 
Now, almost to finishing. Can we do the similar business for the spectral theory? Because uh, they are, we are considering the scales are far below the, uh, the bachelor scale, which is far below the Kolmogor scale. Therefore, scale separation. Then we consider the, uh, the equation which is obtained by the spectral pleasure as the equation conditioned by epsilon. So by solving this equation, we have some dissipation spec, uh, di uh, scalar spectra in far diffusive range, which is Gaussian decay. Then we take an ensemble average over distribution epsilon. The result is, again, we have uh, this factor. The, this exponent is smaller than one, 0.7, very close to the previous one. So they might, they, this suggests that when the Reynolds number is very high, in the far diffusive range, the expo, uh, scalar spectra decays slower than exponential. And if these stories are true, then this suggests that even the scalar spectra at the second order moment is not universal, strongly, weakly dependent on Reynolds number. So let me summarize. The E theta is affected by intermittency of the string motion, and the functional form is stretched exponential. And the power is weakly dependent on Reynolds number. And the spectral tail obtained by DNS and the exponential experiment data are not, too, not long enough in the diffusive range. The collagen spectrum is happen to be closer to the DNS, my understanding. And uh, probably the bachelor constant is also dependent weekly on the range number. So I have to click. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.